Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Super NES Classics app, I guess you want to call it, on the Nintendo Switch. So for those of you who don't know what this is, um, the Nintendo Switch has an online component called Nintendo Switch Online that you have to pay a membership fee for uh, in order to play games online. Much like on PlayStation Network, where you have PS Plus, and much like on Xbox, where you have Xbox Live Gold, etc., they give out free games because you're part of the program. But unlike those programs where every month there's a new release or whatever, with Nintendo it's been a lot different. First of all, earlier this year they had an NES app where they released a bunch of old school Nintendo games along with uh, this Nintendo online service. I never played any of those. In fact, most people weren't very interested, I guess, in seeing those. I don't know why. But I guess a lot of people were just like, yeah, maybe they're too old or whatever. I'm not against going back and checking those out at a future date, but we never really got around to it for whatever reason. But today, I'm going to be exploring the SNES games, Super Nintendo games, that are available as part of the Nintendo Switch online service, okay? And as you can see, there's quite a lot of them. What we're going to do is we're going to go through this menu, much like I did when I just covered the Sega Genesis Mini, and I'm going to talk a little bit about each game and what I know about each game. I'll let you know if I played them or not. I'll let you know... My thoughts about each one. Um, and then, yes, today we are actually going to play some of these games, depending on what people on the stream want to see. All right? I don't know how long I'll play each one. It all depends on what people request. Okay? So, first of all, what you may notice is that they all kind of have the same kind of picture. That's because, much like with the Genesis Mini, this app has laid out the actual box art for the games, which is kind of neat. Uh, from what I understand, unlike the Genesis Mini, no, you cannot change the region of the game. What you can do is you can actually do 4-3 aspect ratio, pixel perfect, which slightly squishes it. Nah, we probably will do 4-3. We certainly don't want a CRT filter, right? Um, and yes, there actually is the ability to play some of these games online, which is kind of interesting. And yes, some game it'll sort them by like one and two players too. But we're all only going to be playing them single player here today. Okay, uh, so what do we got? All right, let's take a look through the games that are available. First of all, Brawl Brothers. Um, Brawl Brothers kind of stinks. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up. I played it. I remember renting it a couple times back in the day. I don't like it that much. I think the final fight <clears throat> is kind of the quintessential, uh, the epitome of, of a side-scrolling beat-em-up and what it should be. Or, if you're talking on the Genesis or the Sega's console, Streets of Rage. Brawl Brothers was kind of like a knockoff of both. It was trying to do a side-scrolling beat-em-up, but I don't think it's as good, nearly as good as either one of those other franchises. But it's okay. Like, it's passable. But I never bought it, and I only played it a couple times back in the day. But we could still check it out if you guys are interested. <clears throat> Breath of Fire. <clears throat> now, this is very interesting. I never played Breath of Fire. Breath of Fire is an RPG, okay, turn-based RPG, like Final Fantasy or like any of those other classic RPGs. But for whatever reason, I never played the Breath of Fire franchise. I was heavily into Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, <clears throat> Earthbound. <clears throat> for some reason, I never played this. I couldn't tell you why. I I know I've seen it before. I, I you know I, I used to be subscribed to Nintendo Power, so I would know about all the new games coming out. Um, but for whatever reason, I just never touched it. So that could be something interesting to check out. Demon's Crest. Now, if I'm correct, I think I'm correct in my assumption, Demon's Crest is a semi-sequel to another game that's in this collection, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. So, Ghouls and Ghosts, for those who don't know, uh, actually it started off with Ghosts and Goblins, was a side-scrolling 2D platform game that was incredibly difficult. It was essentially what you would call a quarter muncher from arcades back in the day, made by Capcom. That's right, Capcom used to make arcade games before Street Fighter. And this game, you start Arthur, a knight, who would throw lances at enemies, and the enemies could pretty much insta-kill you, but if you had armor on, you'd get one additional hit. It was a very, 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 very difficult game, okay? Um, well, Arthur had many spin-offs. He had, first it was Ghosts and Goblins, then it was Ghouls and Ghosts, then they had Super Ghosts and Goblins, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. But then the franchise was so popular, they wanted to make spin-offs. And I believe that they made, like, Game Boy ports, of the Ghouls and Ghosts games. And then eventually, <clears throat> they made a game starring um, 
Red Armor. Red Armor was one of the enemies from Arthur's Ghouls and Ghosts series, or Go Ghosts and Goblins series, whatever you want to call it. And for, they made him the main character of his own franchise of games. For what I remember, I think they were there were Game Boy games that he was in, and then also they made a Super Nintendo game called Demon's Crest. Now, I don't know if it ever got any sequels or anything, but in this, it's very different because instead of being um, a knight, that's kind of like stuck on the ground. You could fly around. You could shoot projectiles and do all kinds of crazy stuff. So it actually was a much more maneuverable version. But at its core, it's still kind of like playing Ghosts and Goblins or Ghouls and Ghosts, where you're very weak. You can only take a couple hits till you die. But you, you felt more superpowered because you could control this demon rather than being the knight on the ground. Okay? So, pretty neat. I don't know if we'll check that out today or not. F-Zero. One of the launch titles for the Super Nintendo. And it was the first, one of the first games to use, I forget exactly what the technology was called. Don't get me wrong, don't, don't quote me. I think it might have been called Parallax Scrolling. But you know how with, with the games of this era, instead of just being pure 2D side scrolling, you can now have the ability to have a lot of scrolling uh, uh, objects on the screen at once. And this one, you would be driving on a... Oh, Mode 7, was it called? Mode 7, thank you. Mode 7 Scaling. So it was a top-down view of a racer, but it was on this flat plane that could move super fast. And basically, there were 3D elements to the game. Um, even though there was no 3D graphics, there were 3D elements to the game. So it blew people away for the way it looked. But F-Zero is very difficult. It's, like, super hard to play. It's very tough. You have to be, like, fucking crazy good at it to, to do it. I'm not. I think I, I remember renting it at least once and being like, damn. Like, this game is fucking tough, dude. So I never really got good at it at all. But you can always check that out, okay? Um, Joe and Mac 2 Lost in the Tropics. Sorry you guys can't see the artwork because my stupid camera's in the way. Hold on. I guess I could turn it off momentarily so you guys could see it. Joe and Mac Lost in the Tropics. So, interesting story here. Um, I played Joe and Mac 1, a full co-op playthrough with my friend from elementary school, grammar school, whatever you want to call it. He came over to my house one day and I had rented it. No, I take it back. He owned it and we did a full playthrough of it and we loved it because he had only played it with his siblings but had never beaten the whole game. And we sat there one day, we played the whole thing. It was like three hours long or something. It's a great game. What it is is you play as two cavemen. Okay. And these two cavemen are going through prehistoric times trying to survive against dinosaurs, woolly mammoths, and all kinds of hazards. So it's, it's a 2D action platformer. And the cool thing is you can get all kinds of different uh, items. You could either beat enemies with a club. Later on, you could get enemy, uh, items you could throw. Like you could throw axes and we stone wheels and all kinds of fun stuff. And the game has hidden secrets and stuff. Seven Sun 7 said the game was also known as Caveman Ninjas. That is correct. Um, outside of the United States, the game was called Caveman Ninjas for whatever reason. So, Joe and Mac 1, I really like the game. This is Joe and Mac 2, Lost in the Tropics. I never played this one. Um, I don't know why they included the sequel and not the original. That's kind of weird to me that they would make it, uh, only, only the sequel. Because I think the first one... Would have been like the most amazing one. You know what I mean? Um, but I don't know. It is what it is. The sequel. I, hopefully the sequel is good. I never played it. Okay. Now I'm coming back. I'm back. Okay. Kirby's Dream Course. Admittedly, this is one I don't know anything about. If you read the box art, it says a truly outrageous checkerboard challenge. I don't know what this is. It seems like this is some kind of a spinoff game off of Kirby. So I don't know much about it. But it's funny because right next to it, <clears throat> we've got Kirby's Dream Land 3. So Kirby had had two games before this. I believe they were both NES games. Kirby's, Kirby's Dream Land 1 and 2. Although one of them may have been a Game Boy game. Because I'm trying to remember back in the day. I think Kirby had a Game Boy game as well. But I don't know if it was called Kirby's Dream Land or not. So this is the first 16-bit one, I believe. Um, and, you know, Kirby, it's a very chill game. It's a fun game. That might be one for a fun playthrough. Pilot Wings. I believe this was either a launch title or close to a launch title for the Super NES. Um, 
first game with major flight mechanics on the Super NES. And you would go ahead and fly around and, uh, you know, there you go. That's all it really is. It's flying around with, like, gyrocopters and all kinds of stuff. Awesome. That's it. There's nothing else to say about the game. You're flying around with gyrocopters and planes and stuff. If you like flight, you like pilot wings. Uh, Timbo Slice. Oh, by the way, people are saying press X for details. Yeah, here you go. We can actually... Oh, okay, we can check out the years that the games came out. What? Number of players, four. Playtime, four minutes for Brawl Ballers. Four. You can beat the game in four minutes. I get the feeling that's not correct. Breath of Fire, 1994. Demon's Crest, 1994. Playtime, seven minutes. What is this playtime? This is completely wrong. <laughs> you can only play the game for seven minutes, and then the game explodes. Playtime, six minutes? This is so silly. 1995. Oh, wow. Career's Dreamland 3, 1997? Dude, this is one of the last games for Super Nintendo, then. Because by 97, already the N64 was out and everything. That's interesting. Yeah, see, Pilot Wings 91, it was a launch title. You can tell the ones that were 91 were the launch titles for Super NES. Okay, cool. Um, oh, that means how many how many minutes you've played the game? Oh, so I guess Kat, when Kat was checking this out, because my wife was checking this out on the Switch, she probably booted a few of these games and played them for a few minutes. That's what it is. Okay. Timbo Slice Cheery says... You mean you're not one of the millions staring at a black hole on Fortnite? Season 10 event happened and destroyed the world of Fortnite, and you go into the game and you see a black hole and you can't play it. Fascinating. Who cares? Sleeney, just reached for 10 months. Just hope you're doing well. I just watched your Indigo Prophecy playthrough. I hope you revisit it sometime it has been remastered. Um, Been quite a long time since that, man. That was way back in the day, like 2009 to 2010. But maybe someday I will check it out. I know, it was remastered. Okay. Continuing on, Star Fox, the original Star Fox that started it all. It's actually a very fun game. It also is the first game that used the 3D effects, or excuse me, the Super FX chip. See, it says it in the bottom right-hand corner of the box, it says Super FX. This was a new chip that they had invented to be part of Super NES games. And it was one of the very first games of the 16-bit console generation to use polygons in it. Before, before Star Fox, essentially no games were using wireframe models or polygons. It was all 2D sprites on a rendered plane. This was one of the very first games to use the 3D rendering. The game looks like crap. It does. You're going to see if we play this. The game looks really bad. It didn't age very well. But it's a cool historic game. It's the first game in history that really majorly went to the mainstream using 3D graphics. So... <clears throat> Uh, on console, I should say. Okay, on PC, things have been using 3D for er, in, in polygons for quite some time. Um, CM Fool to me three dollars said, "Play the Quiet Man." Oh. I fell for it again. I seriously fall for every single effing time. Thank you, CM Fool, for the three dollar tip. You're actually the biggest tipper of the day. The day. Let's get you up on the leaderboard. <clears throat> uh. Il Moa says that Breath of Fire is one of the best RPG franchises of all time. And he also says Kirby's Dream Course is amazing. Kirby's Dream Course is amazing. Timbo Slice just cheers that most of these games were on the SNES Classic, and the same with NES games on the Switch. On NES Classic, makes me uh, makes sense why they stopped making them. They decided to just do this. I mean, I guess so, right? That makes sense. I believe the difference is that the SNES Classic had a lot more RPGs on it. Like I think it had Final Fantasy and, and Earthbound, and those aren't in this collection. Continuing on, Stunt Race of X. This one I don't know much about. <clears throat> a 3D driving game with overthrowing adrenaline. Released on a Super Nintendo in 94, the game's big draw is the attention to detail that gives the vehicle control the sense of a real driving experience. There are three types of vehicles. You can use Trailer in the Speed Tracks bonus game. And it used the 3D... Okay, it used the 3D chip, much like Star Fox. I've never played that game before. I don't know anything about it. Interesting how the cover is Claymation. You see that? The actual cover of the game is like claymation figures. Kind of unique art for it. Ladies and gentlemen, is this the very first Earth Defense Force? Seriously, is this the very first Earth Defense Force game? This is the game that started it all. Humans versus bugs. Let's see. 1992. You're fighting mysterious alien forces called the Ag Agima. 
Prevents the Earth from enemy invasion by using high-tech weapons at your disposal. Dodge enemy attacks as you fly through six areas. It sounds to me like a shoot 'em up right? Y yes, people are saying, yes, this is the first EDF game ever made. But this is a... It sounds like a shmup, right? A shoot 'em up It doesn't sound like anything like what the game became in later iterations. <clears throat> oh, by the way, it's called... S Wait a minute. So this... On the game box, it just says Earth Defense Force... But when you look here, it's called Super Earth Defense Force. Huh. Maybe they screwed up the game box and they didn't name it properly on there. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Super Ghouls and Ghosts. I already had mentioned the Ghouls and Ghosts franchise. You guys know all about it. So this was the one that was made for the Super NES. It says the third game of the legendary Ghosts and Goblins. Right, because it was and Go Ghosts and Goblins. Ghouls and Ghosts, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, right? I think that's the order it went. <clears throat> this is also on the Genesis Mini, and I've already done a playthrough of it more than halfway through, I believe. So more than likely, if I try this, we'll just see how it compares to the Genesis Mini, but I'm probably not going to play because I've already played most of the game on the Genesis. So, um, All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we're getting into the truly nostalgic stuff for me, okay? Super Mario Kart. This game fucking rules. Sorry for swearing for those of you who are offended. I love the Mario Kart series, and Super Mario Kart 1 was an amazing classic. Great music. It had the, what was it called? The Mode 7 graphics, okay? Good controls, and a variety of Mario characters, as well as Donkey Kong making a guest appearance. So for me, it was like the best of all things combined. And the only complaint I have about Mario Kart 1, it's very difficult when you play the harder stages and the harder speeds, and the computer cheats on the harder difficulties. What I mean by that, it outright breaks its own rules. The enemies you're racing against will infinitely have items. They don't have to pick them up, they just have them. It's like, how? Huh? Why? They just always have them. It's just a, some, a game mechanic they put into the hardest level. When I used to play this, I owned this for the Super NES, and I mastered the game to the point where I could beat it even on the hardest difficulty, almost flawlessly. I knew all the shortcuts. I knew how to do the speed boost. But I haven't played this game in so long. I, I'm dying to play this today. But I know I'm probably going to suck horribly at it because I haven't played for it for so long. And by the way, my favorite character in the game is Yoshi. My second favorite character is Koopa. So there you go. Oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, I have told many stories over the years. Of my fun experiences with Super Mario World. That number one is going to be my favorite platformer of all time. It always will be. And number two, I remember, I still remember Christmas morning. The day when I got my Super Nintendo. And Super Mario World was the game that came with it. Because yes, ladies and gentlemen, back then, consoles came with games. You didn't buy the console and have nothing to play on the damn thing. It actually came with video games to play on them. Okay? Um, and... I loved this game. I played it all Christmas Day. My parents were like, huh? Oh, move. I hit the move button by accident. Um, I played it all day Christmas Day. 1991. Oh my god. It was so much fun. This game is so amazing. And there's so many hidden levels. And there's so many there's optional ways to complete levels that unlocks the Star World and the Special World. I love this game. Now, I have done um, a full playthrough of Super Mario World already. It was co-op with John Rambo back in the day. But I would love to do a full playthrough of Super Mario World again, being that this time it would be direct capture. I'd be experiencing it, you know, with a live stream audience. I would love to do a playthrough of this game, okay? Now, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, is good. But in my opinion, nowhere near as good as Super Mario World 1. First of all, it took them four years to make the game. Um... This one has Baby Mario, and the entire game is pretty much consistent of riding Yoshi and using Yoshi to aim and throw eggs. This game is way easier than Super Mario World 1. I think this is meant to be like a very dumbed-down version for like very, very young kids. It's still fun, don't get me wrong, but it's very basic and it's not super challenging. I think it would still be good for like a chill playthrough, but I don't think this is anywhere near as good as the first game. Okay. Super Metroid. This may shock you. I've never played this game. Never. For whatever reason, back in the day, 
the Metroid franchise didn't appeal to me. Today, it obviously does. I like it. But back in the day, I never played Super Metroid. So, pretty cool that it's in this collection. And I have the ability now to play it direct capture. If you guys ever want to see me play Super Metroid, I could do it. I, I've never even played it. So, there you go. What the hell is that? This looks like a game that was only on the Super Famicom, and the reason I say that is because, as you can see, it's not the same box style as the American versions of Super NES games, and it's in Japanese. It's Super Puyo Puyo 2. It says, this is the Super Famicom version of the head-to-head -head puzzle game Puyo Puyo 2. The game has never been translated into English. The object of the game is to clear your grid of falling blobs called Puyos by arranging them in link chains of four or more same color Puyos. Now... I've already played this game, and you might be saying, what? Did you play it? Did you play the Japanese version back in the day? They just said it was never a translated for American audiences. No. I played it on the Genesis Mini. It's called Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. It's exactly the same game, only in that game, they changed all the characters into robots that Robotnik created, and instead of the little blobs, they're now beans. So it's exactly the same game. So I don't know if I'll play this, only because I've already played it over on the Genesis Mini. Okay. Super Soccer. So, uh... <laughs> someone made a joke in the stream chat. They said, oh, this is Donald Trump back in the day when he was young and vibrant. And he used to be a soccer goalie. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. Super Soccer. I never played this because I was not into sports games back in the day. So, I never played this. But, 16 teams. It's the soccer game for uh, Super Nintendo. I wonder if outside of the United States if this was called Super Football. I wonder. Same thing, Super Tennis. Never played it. I believe this was one of the launch titles for the SNES. I never played Super Tennis. So I don't know if you guys want to see me play this or not, but I would consider playing it if you wanted me to. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> my favorite Zelda game of all time, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. This is the game that got me into the Zelda franchise, and I've played this game a ton um, it blew me away because when I was playing it as a new release, I wasn't cheating or anything. I was playing it honestly. And then once you beat the stuff in the light world and you go to the dark world and you realize there's way more content, like eight more dungeons and shit, it blew my mind. I was like, oh my God, this is such a good game. Um, it was not a launch title. It came out the second year that the Super NES was out. Um, but I love this game. The only thing is I just... A few weeks ago, played Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. So I doubt that I would go and do like a full playthrough of this game at this time. Only because I've already... Number one, I've already done a full playthrough of this game. Many years ago, again, when I was doing that Summer of Retro event, I played many games including Super Mario World and Legend of Zelda Link to the Past as full playthroughs. So I doubt at this point that I would do, do a full playthrough of Link to the Past now because I just played Link's Awakening, which is the exact same kind of game. But I would love to do a second playthrough of it at some point in the future. So, this is what is available for games if you're a Nintendo Online subscriber. It's a good mix in my opinion. Although, admittedly, I'm shocked that they did leave out a lot of the games that were on the Super NES Mini. Including some of the best RPGs of the time. Like the Final Fantasy series, Earthbound, Chrono Trigger. Like, you would think if a lot of those were on the Super Nintendo Mini, they would have put them in here. They didn't for whatever reason. I don't know if later on they'll add those or not, but it's definitely a good variety of games. And the good thing about this is there's, there's some of these games I've wanted to play over the years as Direct Capture and haven't had the opportunity to, and now I'll have the opportunity to because they're on here, okay? <clears throat> so pretty neat. And I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed my walkthrough. I'm going to be playing some of these games shortly. All right.